and welcome to another Blender Know How tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a Kit Kat, and we're going to be able to embed it, uh, create the shape, and give it these imperfections in the chocolate. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll put a brand new scene in Blender, and uh, you can leave that default cube. Uh, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm actually also going to turn on my screencast key so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So to move around, you can see down here I'm using the middle mouse button. So go to edit mode, hit 1 to go to the front view and make it smaller. Um, we're going to want it to be something like this shape. Go to the side view, stretch it out. Something like that, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, we're just going to make it that general shape. Okay, so now we're going to go into uh, 1. I'm going to go into wireframe by hitting Z and dragging to the left. And then select just those top ones. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude up. Hit right click. And then S to scale in. And if I go to the top, you can see that it's scaling the sides more than it is or the ends more than it is the sides. Um, so I'm just going to try and fix that by locking it to the axis. So if you hit S and middle mouse click and drag you can lock it to an axis or you can just hit Z, X, or Y to lock it to those axes. Um, so I'm just going to actually scale it down this way a little bit and this way. And now the point here is we want to get this side and this side to be roughly the same. Now that when, now when we hit E and extrude up we are going to pull it up a little ways and we're going to do the same thing to get our basic shape of the Kit Kat. So again, just had the basic cube scaled out and then we extruded the top one in or we just inset it and then we extruded it up and in. So nothing too complicated yet. Let's go into the modifiers tab and click subdivision and then after it let's make an array and I'm going to add four of them. Um, you can wait to do that one or you can do it now. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then let's actually, this will be easier, let's get rid of the subdivision and just throw on a bevel and then put that up here. And I'm going to go into edit mode and solid. You can see it already did a lot of that for us here. I'm going to make this smaller, maybe point zero one five somewhere in there and then give it some more segments to make it round. Um, that seems a little big. Maybe it's because, yeah, the scale of this is a lot smaller than what I had before. Um, I'm going to actually just go in here, select all of them by hitting A and hit S, and that will make the bevel seem smaller. Something like that. I think that looks like a Kit Kat shape. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the Kit Kat logo on here. So first off, I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, you can go to that link. I'll download the font for Kitty Cat, which is uh, the Kit Kat font. Um, you can get it from lots of websites. You can just Google it if you don't want to go to that one. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. But that, or you can get any font you want, really. It doesn't, you can make it whatever you want. But for Kit Kat, I think this is the closest font that I found. If you find others, leave um, comments down below. Maybe even link them. But, uh, so we need to first off, we need to add uh, by shift A, add. I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to rotate that by 90 in the negative direction. I'm going to hit G just to move it over here and scale it down. And what you want it to be, you want it to be really close. I know I noticed on the Kit Kats when I was looking at references, they go all the way to the border. So we'll first put in our text, but then we'll move it. So I'm going to put in, and you can't see it right here, but just trust that it's going in. And well, maybe the best way to do this is to move it up so you can see what you're typing. And I put a space there and then tab out and you can move it over here. It's just hard to see while you're typing it in this area because it's actually being placed beneath or like inside your object. So I'm going to move it up so we can see it here. I'm going to put it maybe like right below the surface and then come in here to the text and I think it's in the geometry. There is a extrude. That's what I was looking for. And you can see that it's extruding it now. Maybe now move it up just a hair. Something like that. So we want it to be clipping into that. Oh, 
hopefully that's making sense. So now we need to get that um, font loaded up in here. So and to do that, we just go here, click on font, and on the regular one, we just hit the load, go to where you download your font, um, click on it, and it will appear on here. So it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm just going to center it a little bit in the middle of our KitKat, and maybe scale it down just a hair something like that. Okay, so now next we need to uh, boolean cut it into our KitKat. So let's go to this object, click the modifier, go into boolean, or add modifier boolean, click on this eyedropper tool, and click on KitKat. Now you just want to hide the KitKat, and that didn't work. Oh, that's because we don't want to hide that yet. So get this the way you want it to look um, and then you're gonna do something that you can't you can undo it but after this you can't really like edit it that much as easy so edit your font and all that stuff as much as you can now and then as soon as you're ready go in here to object and then convert to and then mesh from curve or text and then uh, now if you go in here you can see that this is actually geometry instead of text. So let's go back into here to into here. Because this can only accept geometry, you can't accept text. So now when we hide this, yeah that's looking better. So you can see that I, I got some weird stuff going on here on the edge. First off, that's, there's an easy fix for that. You can go in here and do edge split. And that'll fix that issue. Um, second off, maybe it's just too big. It looks a little bit big for the KitKat, honestly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm also going to throw the boolean as the second, and then the edge split as the third, and array as the last, because then it'll go across all of them. But I'm going to go up here to the text here. I'm going to unhide it again, and I'm just going to make it a little smaller. I think it may be a little bit too big in this, and something like that now hide it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, something else that I've noticed um, that I don't like about this is right here, whoops, go into the front view and go into wireframe. We're going to want to take all of this and scale it down a little bit this way. And the reason for this is because on a KitKat this is also angled a little. And I'm also going to take these four and maybe take them, maybe make them a little smaller as well. Just to get that shaping a little bit better. Yeah, that's looking a little better for mine. Oh, and I also need to do the same thing with this angle. Let's go back into wireframe, take all these, and scale that down just a hair. So I'm now I'm just making this edge and this edge um, roughly the same. That's that's looking a lot better. Now though we need to make this a lot smaller because now it's clipping it weird. So yeah, this is kind of the game and how it works. Sometimes you just have to redo some things. But there we go. And that's not what I do. I want to hide that. And it's also arrayed all the way across these. Uh, yeah, so let's look good. Now let's just do some quick shading with this. So I'm going to open up the shader editor and click new. And we're going to leave these two things the same. And we're just going to add, we can add a base color, uh, make it brown, something like that. <clears throat> Maybe, yeah, like somewhere in there. That looks like a good brown. And then uh, we need, what we need to do is we need to add subsurface. Um, we need to drag subsurface all the way up. And I'm going to render this so you can see what it looks like in cycles. And then this will show you what it's looking like. And it's because it has a white subsurface. 
So what we need to do is we need to go in here and add that brown. So I'm going to just hit this, click that same brown that we had from before, go in here, and then maybe make it a little darker. Because as in the subsurface of chocolate, it seems like it almost gets darker. And that's just a personal thing that I, I think is happening, but um, usually subsurface is a little lighter. So you can always increase that. And maybe it is, maybe what this needs to be, this needs to be a little darker. And this needs to be uh, like this. Actually, that looks pretty good. I think I'm liking that one. So I'm going to leave it like that. Subsurface adds that like second layer that's inside of the surface that uh, gives it kind of a softer look. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, second, we need to decrease this specular amount. That's essentially that highlights. You can see the difference. Um, this is all the way. That's nothing. Uh, we want it pretty close to nothing. Chocolate isn't very specular. And it's pretty rough too. So you're going to increase the roughness, decrease the specular. It does have a little bit of like gloss, like waxy feel. Something like that. I think is feeling like chocolate. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to add those little imperfections in the chocolate. And this is actually made pretty easy. What we need to do is we just need to shift A, add. Um, let's start off by adding a noise texture and add a texture cord in it and drag that to the, the object. We need this because if not, it, it stretches in weird spots across certain locations on the KitKat. So I'm going to throw in a scale of uh, 1, 11, point, yeah, I should do 11, uh, point 0.5, and 3.5 and here. And you can see what this looks like right here. If you just throw in the factor into the base color and turn the subsurface down, this is what the actual texture looks like. And you can play with these, um, these values as much as you want. But I'm just going to add a color ramp in here now. Oops. Like this, just throw it in there. And if you drag these down, we can make this a lot harsher. And you can see that there's these things now. Those are going to be our imperfections. So I'm just going to dra drag that there to increase the contrast and get rid of all the little details. And then I'm going to add um, a bump. So now if you drag this color into the height and then drag the normal into the normal, you can see we've got some bump. It looks pretty good other than just very drastic. So um, the distance is the, the thing right here. It's not going to be one, one, it's going to be 0 0.05. And that will make things a lot shallower. Because it gets, if it was one, um, a distance of one, it's, it's going to feel like it's being cut in a lot deeper. Cool. So now if we get rid of that base color, yeah, that looks like chocolate. Uh, if you want to, this is not initially required. But something to give it more detail is you can add uh, mix RGB and you'll throw it right in here and you can do the same thing just by copying and pasting or shifting those and then object there and color here and you can actually edit these imperfections a little bit more. So first off I'm going to make this one. Um, I'm going to increase the detail all the way. Oh, this one should actually have a roughness of 0.5. I thought I put 0.5 in there. But this one's going to be a little bit less, somewhere in there, and with no distortion. So now if we plug this one into the base color, we can see what it looks like. And we might have to get rid of the normal. You can see it's just like a faded over the entire thing. And we kind of want that. That'll add just a little bit of variation that gives it a little realism. And we're going to add this to, we're going to make this an add. Oops, not clamp, add right there. Now we'll add both of those on top of each other. So if we plug in this into here, we can see that we have this wavier pattern with these on there. So I'm going to click the normal, put it on there, get rid of the base, and increase the subsurface. So now we have little imperfections all over our chocolate, and it's looking pretty great. Uh, one last thing that I did here on mine is I added a cube and I just made it smaller. Go into wireframe. I j 
just went like this because I realized that on the insides of this chocolate, oops, like this, let's go ahead and top view here, lined up with that corner. The insides of the chocolate, you can see the ridges here, but then, and you can see a little bump right here because this is a weaker spot of the Kit Kat. So I actually just did this to give it that, but you can't, it doesn't, you don't see that whole ridge. So it just looks like this. And so I just gave it that same material that we created for the, for this material to this one. And voila, it looks not too bad. Gives it a little different, uh, makes it look weaker right there because it doesn't, it doesn't cut into the shape and looks fine. So now I'm going to come in here with the camera, just zoom in and we are done. I hope that you've liked this tutorial. Have some fun with it. Um, good luck with all your projects. If you can't see your KitKat logo, I just noticed on this one, if you can't see it as well, just uh, grab it and cut it a little deeper because it may, it may just not be cut deep enough. Also, if you want to render, um, go up here to the filters and restriction toggles and turn off the render for that or else you will see that in your actual final render. Alright, uh, thank you and we'll see you next time on Blender Know How.